so what we're going to talk about here today is flexible containers inside of ClickFunnels 2.0. Now, flexible containers are coming from what is known as the Flexbox model for CSS. Okay. To back up here, back to older CSS, when CSS first came out, it's based off, of course, HTML, which is the code that gives us the structure of the site. So when you're putting together a ClickFunnels site, you here, let's just go to 1.0. You all know how this works. You come in here and you say, I want to create, well, let's do it up here at the top. We want to add a section. So we're going to come in here. We're going to drop in a section. Okay. Well, what is a section? It is a box. Think of this as a box inside of HTML. So we got one box right here. And now we're going to nest another box inside of it. So we're going to click on our row and we're going to put in a two column row. And now we got the box that is the row inside of the section. So it's just like, you know, Russian nesting dolls is the example. Is it a box inside of a box though? Cause it's two columns. Is the column a box inside of the bigger box? Well, yeah. So we have a row that is a box mm -hmm. and then there are two columns. So the two columns make up two boxes mm -hmm. inside of the bigger box or so like inside of the bigger twin box. Twin Russian dolls. Yeah. And so then we have, we can put in other elements as well. And again, these are nothing more than boxes inside of boxes inside of boxes. Okay. And so when the CSS box model talks about how things are laid out, that's exactly what it's talking about, is these boxes all nested inside of each other because that's how HTML works. And the CSS box model then says, okay, this is how we're going to manipulate these boxes. We're going to put borders around them. We're going to change the background colors. We're going to give them rounded corners. We're going to make them bigger or smaller. We're going to move them left, right, up and down with margin and padding and whatnot. That is the CSS box model in general. Well, the CSS flex box model says, okay, instead of just allowing us to be able to put boxes inside of boxes inside of boxes, we're going to turn this whole thing on its head and we're going to let you put boxes wherever the heck you want to some degree. Now, you, there are other fancier things you can do like positioning and absolute and fix and all that kind of stuff. That's something different than what Flexbox is. But what Flexbox will do is allow you to take things that normally would be impossible to essentially line up the way you want them to and be able to do it with ease and without any CSS in ClickFunnels 2.0. So what I'm going to do first off is to show you just real quickly inside of 2.0 and how to how simple it is to set up a flex box. So we can come here, or in this case here, they call them flex containers. So I said add a section, okay. and we can just come over here and we can click on flex container. Do you guys have a question? No. I have well, I have a question, Dan, and, and I think you're doing an awesome build. And so my question might interfere with that build. And if it does, then I'm okay to hold. But I think that we still have to go back on like, Dan, why do I care about any of this? Like, it's awesome. It's good to know. But why do I care? Well, you might not, but the rest oh, of the world. No, I do. Care. I am. I am digging Flexbox. You, so, I am sold. This is an image of something I built the other day using Flexbox. Okay. So what this is, is this is not three columns here. This is three flex containers, which we told to line up side by side. So normally the flex containers would come in one on top of each other. Well, within the settings, we say, okay, we don't want that. We want you to go like this. Okay. And you're going to see why that's important in a little bit as I build out some of this stuff. Same thing with these three stars here. These are three individual icons. That's not a singular image. When you put them in, it comes in one on top of each other. I said, put it this way. And then what I said is when you go to mobile, leave them side by each. Whereas the normal mobile functionality, especially 1.0, would be to stack them back on top of each other. I said, no, 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 leave them side by side like that. So if I so could just play dumb for a second and summarize what I think you just said. So I think what you just said, and again, correct me if I'm wrong, is that out of the box click funnels, the way that all of us learned how to build, like anybody who went through Catherine Jones CF Design School, right? Like we all are very familiar with the concept of columns. 
We even know have some fancy <coughs> tricks on how to manipulate columns that most people don't know. And so we have all really built a lot with like understanding the concept of columns. And we all know the pain point of, yes, I know how to make columns work on desktop, but the way that ClickFunnels out of the box decides how those columns render on mobile is something we can't control. So we normally have to end up going to like building our a new mobile only solution and a desktop only solution because we can't control the way that it's choosing to render columns. That's kind of first pain point. That yeah, columns, columns will always stack in 1.0, which is actually truly not actually a function of CSS or HTML. It is actually a function of click funnels that mm -hmm. they have them stack on top of each other. That is not sure that we can't control it. Right, we cannot control yeah. it. So if you wanted to keep these three stars side by each like that, you wouldn't be able to without, yeah. again, doing some sort of coding in order to make that happen. Yeah. And, and then so, I think this, oh, go ahead, sorry. I forget what I was gonna say. Okay, uh, sorry. And then I think the second thing, if I'm hearing you right, is again, all of us who are really well versed in columns, we can do all kinds of like fun stuff where it looks like there's like, call it like compare charts and like coloration behind the column and things like that. But again, a pain point is that it thinks that all these columns are equal height. So if we have something that's inside there, that's not quite equal, we always get this issue of like one box look, yes, one box looks smaller than the other. And so we do all kinds of stupid things like add return carriages or extra padding and invisible you know, divider lines. <laughs> yeah. And you never can control it because there's like 10 gazillion different, like, you know, um, pixel resolutions and screen resolutions and responsiveness. And it's enough to like drive you crazy. And so you have the conversation with your client to be like, well, we can't always control it on all screens. So we try to optimize for 1440 and iPhone 10, you know, or whatever it is. And it's just, it's crazy making, right? So if wow. I'm hearing you right, Dan, again, playing dumb, Flex solves that problem. One line, one line of CSS code fixes that problem. Mm -hmm. But Flex, right? Well, it is using flex, yes. Mm -hmm. um, it is using the display property with the value of flex. And once you turn that on in the right place, you got another right place to turn it on, then boom, it will actually make all of these the same height. It's known, it's known as stretch inside of flex is that the default is actually to stretch all of the columns if you apply flex to the columns. Okay. It will make awesome. them automatically all the same height. So that awesome. is exactly what I did with this right here is I have different height content, yet automatically they go to being exactly the same height. Yeah, amazing. Okay, so I'll and let you go ahead and change. Change. Go. And on all these here, you can change how far apart all these items are with, again, in, in 2.0, it's clicking on one thing that will say, oh, well, let's say we want these spread out all the way top to bottom. No, we want all of them at the bottom. No, we want all of them at the top. No, we want this amount of room in between, or we want this kind of a gap in the columns. And you can do that all with just the settings now in 2.0. Awesome. Okay, cool. Okay. So thank you for letting us go on that little bit of a detour. I just think it's, um, I think Nicole Koontz, who's my designer, she single, she thinks that flex is the best thing that's ever happened to her in terms of being able to have the design lay exactly how she wants it to lay on the screen in multiple different screens. So it's just, it's a super powerful tool. And I just wanted to make sure that we hit okay. on that hard, but that you can please keep building because it's awesome. Uh, I love, I love where you're taking us. I just want this to make is sure without ready. a doubt, this is without a doubt the most powerful thing that they have put in here. I've never seen it in any builder before. They still got a couple of bugs in it. They still actually forgot actually one of the flex properties. They didn't even put it in there. So they're going to have to put that in. Uh, but you also see here, we were talking about making these full height independent of the amount of content because it will always pick the tallest column and match them all up. But when you go to mobile then, and in, in this case here, I told it on mobile, I want them stacking on top of each other. You could have them stacked side by each, but that really looks stupid. Um, so we stack them all on top of each other, but you see here then each one of these columns retains its own height. It doesn't have all that extra padding at the bottom. Right. So it shortens it up real nice. And in this case here, I left these three side by side, as well as these two images down here. 
Mm-hmm. So you get complete flexibility. And the coolest part, when I saw this, I was just like, oh, my God, is you <laughs> can change the settings based on the viewport size. Or more, more accurately, you can change the setting based on the device, whether it's desktop or if it's mobile. Mm-hmm. Awesome. And then, of course, you know, if you still can't get it to get me exactly the way you want, well, then you add in a little bit of CSS if you need to. Mm-hmm. But this, I mean, I'll show you real, real, you know, in a second here, how simple the CSS really is in and of itself. But I shot a training video on this a couple of weeks ago, and the video is well in excess of an hour long, just me explaining what Flexbox is. And so it, having an understanding of how Flexbox natively works in, in CSS will help anybody who wants to then go into here, but hopefully I will teach you at least the bulk of it right now. So we'll just move forward. Um, so unless you guys got another question, we're gonna keep moving. No, please keep going, yep. Okay, so before um, for uh, Andrea had her question, I just came in here, let me just delete this out. I came in here and I said, let's add a section. And I said, instead of a section, I'm or in lieu of a section or whatever, I'm just going to put in a flex container. Well, I found this out the other day is that you cannot save a flex container as a universal section or even save it as a section. So the best thing to do on this, although you can build an entire page using just flex boxes in here or flex containers more accurately, um, what you want to do first is create a section and then inside of that, you want to add a new row. And instead of the row, we're going to put in our flex container. So now you can come up here. You can save this as a universal. You can save it, whatever. And then you can use it anywhere you want. So you can use this to build out your header, your footer, whatever you want. Uh, you know, parts of a blog page, which is going to get reused many, many times. You could do it like that. So now here we have what is known as the flex container. And flex really takes two things. You have a container, like I said before, we got boxes inside of boxes inside of boxes. Same thing here. You always have to look at what is a container because that's where you turn the flex on and then it will flex everything inside of it. So all of the elements inside of the container are what get flexed. So the container itself does not flex. Everything inside the container flexes. But because you can nest containers inside of containers inside of containers, you can still then flex the containers because they are then a child element inside of the outer container. So and again, see- just to make sure, Dan, just dumb question. So flex, when you're saying it can flex, it basically either boils down to a line break or a redu- reduction a size change. Is that a really oh. rudimentary way of saying that? No, no. Okay. No. What are the ways that something can flex? Well, you're just going to have to. All right. Okay. Out here for a minute. All right. Because there's, because you'll see it. And as we go along, you'll understand. So I just want to, I'm doing it like this on purpose because when I open this up, you're going to see what amounts to probably about 30 new icons in here that you've never seen before. And so I'm doing it this way just so you get to freak out or not freak out, whatever you choose to do at this point. Oh, we're going to freak out. So we open this up, and all of a sudden, you get all this gobbledygook <laughs> right here. And you're like, what in the heck is all of this? Well, we're going to go back to 1.0 to show you what all of this actually does, because it's a much simpler way, because the problem is here, if I do it inside of an existing flex container, it's going to start applying the flex, and so I can't show you what it would look like normally before we applied the flex. So we're going to come over here, and all I did is, again, section row and then threw in these are all element or images here i just changed the the words that you can put in there normally it says like demo image i changed that to one two three four five six so we've got three boxes with six side by side boxes in the third box yeah well no these aren't side by side these because you can't make them side by side well, without applying flex six inside of them, the same box in the yeah. last box yeah so okay. basically you got your row obviously it creates a column you can't see the column here we're on a single column and then we got six image elements all stacked one on top of each other i made them 250 which pixels. sounds a lot like if i had social media and i'd want some icons all next to each other so think of these as icons <laughs> think of these as the stars in my example right here mm-hmm. same thing these could have been social media icons it doesn't really matter so anything that you want to line up side by each you can do like this 
So we have these six images right here. And as you see, as I move my mouse across it, you're going to see the orange goes all the way across the screen. That's because at this point here, this is known as what is a, a block level element. And a block level element will always take up all the space it can have. But you can change this to an inline level element, and then it will only take up the space required, and it will automatically float it to the left-hand side. So that's the first thing we're going to see when we go into our flex over here and we start playing with it. And I'm purposely doing this in CSS, in the dev tools, because I'm going to show you some stuff in here that's going to look very much like what you're seeing right here, and that's because this is where it came, came from. Uh, come straight out of CSS. So we're going to come in here, and what we want to do is we want to find this very first image element. So here we have our image elements all stacked on top of each other like we just saw. Now, what did I say earlier? We have a container, and then the container, we have the flex container, and then it will flex all the elements inside of it. So we got to go one element outside of these images to this call inner right here. We'll click on that, we'll come down, and all we have to do is say display of flex, and look at what happened. It applied flex to it and put them all across the screen up here at the top. So now the cool thing is a couple things here is you can come in here and you can see where it says flex right here. It's in white. You want to just click on this, and this will show us then as we go forward where all the flex elements are and then where the additional space is, the columns, everything else as we're moving forward. So the other thing when you come is come down here and click on this little thing, which looks very much like this stuff does over here, except, except for the one that's missing. See, there is one that's missing. They got to put this in here. It has to be a uh, flex wrap. Mm -hmm. You can either wrap or not wrap the lines, and they don't have that in here at all yet, so that has to go in there. And I didn't even think about it until I was looking at some help docs this morning, or not some help docs, some uh re feature request and i was just like holy cow he's right they did miss that hmm. and so we're going to click on this and we're going to open it up and look what opens up here exactly what's on the other page for the most part okay. okay so then we start looking at our options here we have our flex direction well we come over here we got flex direction right here so we're going to say flex direction and in this case here each one of these always has a default any any property in css it's always going to have a default value and so in this case here, we got our flex direction of row. And so that means it's going to go horizontally from left to right. Now, the first thing that gets really confusing with flex is you have two axes. You have your main axes, and then you have your cross axes. So in the case of a row, the main axis is horizontal. And in a normal row, it is horizontal left to right. In a cro the cross axis, of course, would then be up and down. But now we can change this to column, and now the main axis is up and down, and the cross axis is left and right. Okay, Dan, and just to surface up a little bit, why the heck do I care about axes? You're going to care in a minute. <laughs> because depending on what axes you are on, or axis, however you want to say it, um, it will change these elements down here. So just watch, because see the way they're lined up now? Once I click on this, look what happened. They all mm -hmm. flip on their sides. So depending okay. on which way you're going, whether it's right and left or up and down, it will change the functionality of all of these other values that you can put in here. So we can go left to right, and we can go top to bottom. Well, then they have the reverse of these as well. So we can redo a row reverse, and you see now it counts from one on the right over to six on the left. Hmm. Okay. So whereas if we go with the regular row, this is what is known as flex start over here. If we do the reverse, flex start is now over here. So it just completely flips it around. Same thing with the column reverse. So here we had flex start up here, flex end down here. We flip that around, it goes the other way. So because of that, it can affect some of these other settings down here. Like if we go here, 
we let it highlight, this says flex start. So it will go to flex start. So everything will justify to flex start. Well, if flex start is over on the right hand side on a column, that means everything's going to float to the right because you have reversed the column. I mean, you have reversed the order of the row. So that's why I said it gets it gets confusing with the different axes and where the starting points are. But because they have put in tools like this in here and now inside of ClickFunnels 2.0, it makes it a lot easier. You start clicking and you, you'll see the stuff move around. Okay. So, okay. So for the two that are um, to make the flex start on the right hand side or the bottom of the container, do you have an example of when you would ever do that? Does that have more to do with like how it behaves to um, the different screen sizes? You, I mean, it could be a mobile. It could be a mobile thing. It could be a lot of different things. I'll have an example right down here that will show you why you would want to use this in case of flipping this around. Okay. All right. Show it. We'll probably understand it better when yeah. we get to that. Okay. Yeah, so the next one down here, and we can turn this off, because like I said, every one of these has a default. In this case here, row is the default for your flex direction. So we come down here, we got wrap or no wrap. In this case, the default is no wrap, but we can turn on the wrap, and then it's going to wrap down to the next line. Because before this, it wasn't wrapping because, in this case here, because it turned them all into inline style elements, and it didn't, you didn't tell it to wrap, it's going to smush them all down into one single line. Here, they will stay as inline level elements, but they'll retain their original width of 250 pixels. So we're going to wrap it around to the next line. Now, the next part comes in, okay, well, how do we get some space in between there? Okay, so we can click on these align content all day long, and they're not going to do anything. Why is that? because we're on the main axis right now. We're not on the cross axis, we're on the main axis because we're on the rows. So in order to move this stuff around, we have to come down here to justify content. So it's a, it's a CSS property known as justify content. It only works if you turn on, on this flex to begin with. But here we're gonna say, we're going to float this to, or we're gonna do flex end. So boom, all of them now go over to the right hand side. Well, if I change the direction here to column, you're not gonna see any change there because again, it's only taking up a certain amount of height. It's not, if there was more height in here for some reason, it would actually go to the bottom of the page. Yeah, there's I, no extra space. Right? right, so it has nowhere else to go because it will still only live inside of that container. It mm -hmm. won't force itself outside of it at all. So we can go beginning, left or right, we can center everything like this, we can do space between, we can do space around, and we can do space evenly. Now, when you got six of them on the screen, it doesn't necessarily look great, but if you had eight or you had six and it was like three per line, that would line up better. But then you can also come in here and it's another property they actually have here, they just call it gap. But in this case here, it's actually two different CSS properties that we can put in here. And it's uh, one of them is column gap, and let's just say we want that to be 20 pixels, so it'll give us 20 pixels in between, and then we can also say row gap of another 20 pixels, and it'll give us space between it like that. So again, it's a pretty simple example, but think of here you have just three, uh, three uh, icons, mm -hmm. and you can, so you can drop the icons in there, you can say, let's center those three icons, and then Fact, let's just do this real quick. I can just uh, let's delete these out of here. Okay, so let's pretend these are icons. We'll go back up to our flex container and we will just say now what do we want to do? We want to center justify this. So that's now being centered justified inside of our column. And then we're just going to come down here and we're going to say we want our column gap to be 20 pixels. We put 20 pixels in between. You don't need to put in any margin. You don't need to set any particular size or anything. Well, you probably still, you still pick the, the, the font size of the icon. So let's say you want them all to be 52 pixels. 
there you go. Put a little space in between. They're perfectly centered. Or you can, again, float them to either end if you wanted to. So however you want them to line up, you may, you know, if you want to left justify them in your column or right justify them in the column, that's where you do something like this. Now, I mean, I have it in a wide single column, but if you could do this into a three column row down in the footer and then mm -hmm. boom, 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 with a couple of clicks now in 2.0, you can put them in the, in the footer, line them all up and be done. No CSS, oh. no nothing. So now the next example here, if you guys are okay with that first one, is people do this all the time. So you're coming down through your thing, and and I refer to this as serpentining. So mm -hmm. you got an image, text, mm -hmm. text, image, blah, blah. Now what happens though when we go to mobile is you got a problem. You got, you know, they're not alternating anymore. So what would your guys' fix for this? Be? <laughs> Duplicate the images and make some of them mobile only. Make some of them desktop yeah. only. <laughs> all right. So you would normally say we want to clone this one here. We're going to put this on top. We're going to say this one we want to be mobile only. And then, well, let me go back to desktop here. <laughs> you can see it easier. And then this one here would be desktop only. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that would be Hey, done. Dan, I'm just going to pause you for a quick second because I think, Mark, first of all, thank you so much for sharing this. So Mark was just saying, like, I'm so lost. And I have to say, so, again, I'm I consider myself pretty tech savvy. Um, when Dan first introduced the concept of flex, I was like, okay, I know it's important, but I don't get it. Like, and then my designer started using it more and I, she loved it. And I was like, I don't know why, but my brain, like, I don't get it. Like I get it, but I don't get it. And so I feel like flex is kind of one of those situations where, you know, whenever you learn a foreign language and you just don't really understand it, but you're just immersion, you know, and then all of a sudden, like you start kind of picking up on it and you like, it starts to kind of make sense. And then all of a sudden you have that design that you're like, I wish I could do this. And you like make the connection to be like, oh my gosh, I can do that with flex. So I would just encourage you. And this is like crazy advice, Mark, but it's the best advice I can give is be just uncomfortable and just kind of let the concepts wash over you. And I swear, just like Warren, what Warren said, I think Warren, you hit the nail on the head. When you hit that design, where you're like, oh, it's not rendering the way on mobile I want it to, or these columns aren't lining up the way I want them to line up, or um, I wish I could control this experience <coughs> a little bit better. Um, flex is going to come into your conscious, and you're going to be like, ah, all right, let's flex. So anyway, I would just I would encourage, and we'll keep talking about it too because it's so powerful, but it is hard to get at first. It is. Yeah, we should just make a whole series on flex and be like, here's all the things we're doing with every time we make something new. I yeah. have an example of my own that if we can get to it, um, we'll get to it. If not, we'll share share it a different time. But yeah, yeah okay, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. okay. this, cause this is awesome. a problem I do every single page I ever make is what what Dan is showing us right here of the problem with the images not being the right order. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So you saw what I did. I just cloned it, dropped it in on top, made one desktop, one mobile. So now here's what we come up with. And normally this looks just fine, uh, depending on how it works. But I've also built it out where the problem came in is that there was the wrong amount of gap in between here. Because like maybe a negative image or negative mm -hmm. top margin on one of them or something. And then maybe you can change it for mobile. Maybe you can't. And sometimes it gets to be problematic. Well, I'll show you a different way to do this altogether. And in order to do that, I'm going to need to take out is this the, yeah, that's the one that's mobile only. Let's take this back out and go back to desktop, change this back to all. Okay, let's save it, preview it, preview. Okay, I'll get this figured out. Okay, so reload it. Okay, what we want to do is we're going to come down here and we're going to come down. We want to identify this row right there. One other thing too, because Mark, I don't know that you, if you're on Dan's, but so one thing that you're seeing here that I think we kind of just jumped in and it's worth saying. So Dan works in Inspector a lot. Um, and again, I know for me when I was first building, even today, Inspector is intimidating. Um, it's very powerful, but it's very intimidating. Um, and so you really have to like, I think I'll just speak for myself. Um, I really have to kind of just be super um, okay with being uncomfortable and fumbling my way. Um, but it, I, so this thing over here on the left that he's in and how he's coding it, 
Um, he has a whole course on it and it's amazing, but this is all about how to work with inspectors so that you don't have to go back and forth between editor um, and preview mode. You can just kind of see right there uh, when he was talking about the boxes, the box inside of a box. So again, I'm not, I'm not sure if you're familiar with that, um, but that's another layer of like, it intimidated the crap out of me when I first started working with Dan. So just uh, wanted to just make sure, cause we don't normally on the show go into inspector very often. So <laughs> I was just going to yeah. say also like, Everything that Dan is doing right here is way easier to do. You don't have to go into Inspector. It's in the native settings in 2.0. So everything yeah. he's teaching you, which is the principle, is way easier to apply in 2.0, yes. which I think he's going to get to. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, well, that, that is definitely true. But I again, I wanted to show how it worked with 1.0 for one thing, but also to give you the idea and principle and seeing it here. Because like I said, if I were to just start dropping this stuff into... 2.0 where we had the flex boxes already turned on is going to like start doing it for us. Mm -hmm. And I want to show how it actually has to be done, what the basis is behind it so that you, you understand where this came from. I think that's really important. And just FYI, this is known as the Chrome developer tool is what this is that I'm currently working in here. And all the major browsers have a dev tool built into them. So if you want to use Firefox or something, go ahead. Some people say actually Firefox's dev tools are even better. I don't know. Uh, but, <laughs> is that something with Joanne? <laughs> is that what you've been doing, battle on? <laughs> no, no. Oh, okay. discussion. But I will tell you at any given point in any day, whether it's 1.0 or 2.0, 90% of the time I have dev tools open on at least one page or multiple. It has helped me understand how to make designs better and what to do the more that you orient and teach on it. So I will say it is super powerful. And one other thing on 2.0, Susan's right in that you won't have to get into the code, but what Dan is looking at over here on the left, it is more easily accessible in 2.0 right at the bottom when you turn on the code element where before it was like this like separated thing that you had to go into css or you had to go into tracking code instead in 2.0 it's all right there which is amazing yeah and then because what i like to do is so i'll, I'll even in 2.0 with the flex boxes because i know how to do it in the css in the dev tool is i'll turn on the flex box and i'll drop some stuff into it then i'll go into the dev i will go on to a live page go into the dev tool and then turn our well flex are already already be turned on and i'll click on that little icon it'll show me the display and i'll just start clicking on stuff okay it's moving here this is the way i want it and then all you gotta do is duplicate that back into into the editor itself okay well i clicked on this one and this one and this one and then that's how i got it to work like that that just for me it works a lot better but again i'm so used to using the dev tool that I know how to do it. Uh, but I'll show you also at the end here how I do it in 1.0. So either way, we need to take these two columns here and we need to switch them. So we need to flex these around only when it goes to mobile though. So we're going, so what you could do, actually this is probably, let's, let's do it this way. Cause this is actually probably a simpler way to even do it is let's come in here and let's, um, well, I guess you wouldn't have to do this. And I was going to say, we could just clone this row and then flip them, but then make one mobile and one desktop. But then we wouldn't need to, we wouldn't need to do that. that that's actually another solution. That's probably even simpler than, than anything else we're doing here. But I will just show you this real quickly then. So we have this, we have our two columns here. We want to flip these two columns. So we're in our row. We're going to come down here and we're just going to say display of, flex and then we're going to say um well let's open up our tool let's do it the way we should be doing it we'll turn on that if we wanted to and then we will click here and we will say what do we want to do we want to change the direction so we're just going to do this so now we just change the direction so we did flex direction row reverse so it just flips it around now when we go to mobile they'll all be stacked up should have been stacked up properly. It's little. What do you I do need wrong? to do a? It's tiny on the left. Oh, side. okay, yeah. Um, that's One right. Other I need too. to do what I need to do is set this actually to. Um, there we go. So it's not reverse because remember before we were talking about our main axis and our mm -hmm. cross axis. Well, when we go from 
desktop, we're in row. When we go to mobile, we are in column. And so now we have to reverse the order of the column, not the order of the row. That's what we have to do. Now, in this case here, we would have to add a media query for to say that we only want this to happen when we go into a mobile view. And so we're not going to go through all that trouble. But what I would do here, if this was 1.0 and I was happy with what I had created for my CSS, I would just simply copy the CSS right here along with the selector, if I had it available, the ID or whatever you're using, I would come into the CSS and I just paste it in. So I do all the work of writing the code, the CSS in the dev tools, and then I just come and paste it in here. And that's the simplest way to do this in 1.0. In 2.0, again, um, you probably won't have to do a lot of that stuff. But now for our third example here, we were talking earlier and we showed the image, in case somebody's just joining us, is getting the height the same on all three of these columns. And so we can do that right here in 1.0 as well. And we can just come in, we're going to, again, we're going to highlight the row because that's where we need to start. And because again, this is going to be our flex container is gonna be the row and we are going to flex the three columns that are inside of it. And so all we have to do is come down here and we're going to just say display of flex and it's not doing it it should be by default i thought unless hmm. you know i should have tested this one ahead of time because it's been a while since i've done it and I forgot <laughs> <That's all right. laughs> yeah, i should have done this one ahead of time <laughs> um because but do i got to do it at this level this one's always confusing. You know, I think, let me, let's just try it here. There we go. All right. Okay, so each one of these columns, so this flex up here, we can turn that back off. Nope, we can't, so that's it. We gotta flex both of them. That's what it is, I, I, that's the trick. Okay, so for each one of these then, so we were at the cow, we're at this level here. So then we say here, display of flex. And then the last one, we'll do the same. We'll do this one as well, display of flex. And of course, they're all the same. And then when we come back up to this level here at the row, let's say we want to change the order of them. And so again, we can, we can change the order that they are in, anything like that. But then also we can come into our column and let's say we want to change the spacing on this. So we can say now, Let's make it, okay, of course, this isn't working right. Which one am I on here? I'm on the red one. Hmm. I was thinking we could come in here and change. Can you be on the inner? Well, I may need to put in another level of flex on here as well. I really thought... So it's been a while since I did this. So stretch is what makes it tall like this. I wonder if I need to go down. Yeah, I do need to go down one more level. So now we got to go into the inside here. We need to say we want to display this flex as well. And now you see it lined them up side by side. And so what we want to do now is we want to line that up as a column. Because, it, again, the default is row. So it wants to line it up as a row. Now we'll line it up as a column. And now we can say, okay, we want to spread them out top to bottom, or we want different spacing in between. As I'm doing this, let's turn this on. So you can see the extra space in between here is what it then flexes and gives you a chance to have it look however you want. And then again, you can still come in here. And so let's say we want, we want them both in the center like this, but we want to do a, this would be a column gap we're in a column right now of 50 pixels. Is that going to work? That, that did it at the top and the bottom, didn't it? But not in between. Hmm. Okay, let's try row gap then of 50 pixels. There you go. So it's row gap in between the two of them. And so now we got 50 pixels in between. Even though we set them to the center, we now said, let's go 50 pixels in between. And so again, all of this can be accomplished with absolutely no CSS inside of 2.0.
which I'm sure you guys are dying to see. <laughs> and build something, build something. <laughs> so, what we're going to do is we are going to build ourselves pretty much, we're going to try to at least, you know, work on some of it here, this right here. Okay. So let's come in here. And what we need to do to start off with is we need to scroll down. Depending on how you get into here, it's either way at the bottom or it's at the top. And so we're going to put in a flex container. So we have one flex container here. And what we're going to do just so we can see these things is I'm going to change the background color on this. So let's make this one a reddish color. Okay. You and your red, Dan. <laughs> no, you're a primary color guy. Uh, would you would you prefer I made it fuchsia or something? No, nope. you do you, boo. Uh, okay. Um, background, here we go. You, you can uh, see that Dan's building columns inside of a row just with flex containers. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying is these should be stacking up on top of each other, but because I'm already in a flex container and because the default for a flex container is row, it automatically makes them row. That's why I couldn't really show you how to build it from scratch uh, without going into 1.0. I didn't, I didn't but do Dan, that. For those of us who don't know though, like this, when you made this row, just to go back, you didn't make three columns in the row. Right? No, what I did is, so we had a flex container mm -hmm. and then inside of that flex container, I dropped a second flex container and then I just cloned it twice. Mm -hmm. So again, we got one flex container out on the outside and then we got three of them on the inside of it right now. Got it. Okay. So now what we want to do is because okay, I have a total side note that's going to be really distracting, but it just, okay. Did anybody no, ever see the South Park where it was like the guy that was like, it's a Taco Bell instead of a KFC instead of a Taco <laughs> Bell and it's a dream state. Do you guys remember this one? And then like the guy's like, okay, I'm going to provide the foreground and my bet my assistant's going to provide the background. And so they're like, Freudian shrink guy comes up and is like, this is what happened. And the guy in the background is like, bah, 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 for dramatic effect. <laughs> anyway, got that's like what this is. Inception's happening. Exactly. We've got total Inception <laughs> happening. Cartman was, was smuggling gravy or something. Is that the same? Yeah, episode? it's called Inception <laughs> because they're all like in a deep sleep and like this. <laughs> anyway. Uh, all right. Now, now what we do here is because we because we're inside of this flex container and we put in, you think of them, you could have dropped a section in here. You could, well, I don't know about a section, but you certainly could drop like a row or elements or whatever inside of here. Uh, but now we're going to come in and we're going to say uh, the direction here is set as, as row at this point. Well, we don't want that. We want to change this. No, actually we did want it as rows. Well, how it should have stacked up normally inside of ClickFunnels 1.0 is one on top of each other because flex was already turned on it lined them up side by each which is what we were looking at for this one right right here is lining them all up side by side so then what we can and do is had the dumb question though as you're doing that am i thinking desktop or am i thinking mobile when you're doing this well if we want to go to mobile it will make them side by side but here check this out so let's come to that flex container we do this we have a clicked on mobile boom and now what happens when we go back here side by each got it so, so i can it, set it for it, both mobile and desktop. it retains it across the, based upon the device isn't it still 770 set, break whatever you have turned on up here will change this whether it's desktop or mobile that's fantastic it, um is it still a 770 break in new 2.0 1170 on a row? Uh, no, no, the viewport that is break for mobile. Yeah, yeah, 770 pixels, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's the viewport break. Got it. Um, Which, again, to everybody in the audience, our poor iPad Pro users get struck. They're just in limbo land. <laughs> and normally it doesn't render well, but for the most part, um, that is pretty much any mobile device. Well, I, I found actually that uh, 1024 pixels, which is an iPad, actually works better in 2.0 than it did on 1.0. Really? Okay, cool. Yeah. I pretty much told all my clients like iPad. Stuff the start but the other thing is though, because you can change the width of anything now, whereas before it was 
uh, it would automatically set this here to 1170. Yeah. Now you can set the the width of the column. In this case, here's width of a flex container, but the width of a column. I sorry, not a column, a row. You said the width width of the row to anything you want now. It had been mm -hmm. defaulted to 1170 in 1.0. Now you can set that on the fly. Good question. Warren is asking, can you set more breakpoints or just two a desktop mobile? Great question, Warren. Hey, you could, but it would take it would take CSS. It would take what's known as a media query. Mm -hmm. You could set an infinite number of breakpoints. If you want to have a breakpoint at 1,024 for iPads to make sure it's perfect for the people on the iPads, you can set that and then you write the rest of the CSS just for that device. Yeah. But, yeah. Which fun fact for all of you 1.0 template lovers, <laughs> I think all Dan, Susan, and I can all uh, speak of horror stories of clients coming to us because they got a template. They had no idea the code that was associated with the template. ClickFunnels is notorious for giving f templates that have code, just old code, doing nothing, some of it doing stuff that's just all over it. So, and that breakpoint stuff and the code for that, the media career stuff, I see it all the time fixing well i don't work with templates but when i try to fix a template it's in there so just a a word to the wise if you're a template lover get rid of all that crap well that's the first question i always have for somebody if i first did you use a template yes yeah. did you check the code what do you mean yeah, yeah. Well, yep <laughs> yeah that's why it's not working uh, yeah. so so as we had over here so we had three levels nested deep here for our flex. So we had flex at the level of the row, then we had flex at the level of what is there, the column, and then we had to do flex one more time on the inside to get the elements to line up the way we wanted to inside of here. Now you wouldn't have to do this last one because we could just come in here, wherever I was, we can come in here and just start dropping in elements. We can drop in some headlines, we can do whatever, and depending on what we do, well, let's just put some in. Here's another nice thing about 2.0 is that it will, you, you don't have to go out every time you click on something. So I can put in a headline, a sub headline and a paragraph and some bullet points. And you see what happened here is it, uh, they all maintain the same height. But now again, the, um, so that's automatic. What is again, what is known as stretch is the default as soon as you turn on as soon as you turn on the flex box, stretch is the default for the height of these elements. And again, the default again is row. So we would have to come in here. We say, okay, we don't want this in a row. We want this in a column. So we're going to click here and we're going to put everything into a column. That is so huge. Like, I just got to pause for a second. Like, that is so huge. I would spend hours again. So, Mark, to your you know earlier question. So, just the ability for those to stay consistent. Like, all of those are all of those boxes are consistently the same height, and we don't have to do some shenanigans around. Like, let's do a return and see if it it's okay on my giant 27 inch. And then let's try it on a 1440 and like, Oh, too many returns and play with space of height. You know, like it's crazy making, but now that that is just a hundred percent taken care of and we can have that consistency of a look is so big. Cause I agree with you, Susan, I think probably on almost a hundred percent of my builds, there is some element of this that is needed. Yeah. Okay, now would you see it? I did here. Actually, let me just turn this text white so we can actually. Hey, see. Nathan, welcome. So we can actually see the text. Oh, and Warren said, but 2.0 only has a UI for two sizes. Correct, Warren. Yes, that is it is. Um, and then Nathan, last check of time and no notifications. Ah, dang it. I don't know that we did an event for today, too. We've usually been trying to be pretty good about events, but I don't know that we did one. For Guys, today, but... I have the event set up, but you have to go RSVP to them if you want the notifications. Ah, dang it all. Yeah. You know what, Nathan? We're always up for suggestions on how to make it better, too. It doesn't, it doesn't yeah. notify anybody of the events, either. Should so we start just, emailing you guys? <laughs> Let us <yeah>. know. <laughs> totally open. Yeah, we just, we love it. We love you guys here. So yeah. And Nathan, just to bring to real quick summary. So, and we'll, we'll actually get, be in in here pretty soon, but um, for the replay and what we're talking about now, just so we don't dive head first is um, we have Dan on and he is talking to us about the power of flex. And if you're not familiar with the concept of flex, flex just allows you to be able to manipulate the stuff on the screen in a really cool way. And normally it's a crap ton of just like code work, um, or shenanigans on 1.0, but in 2.0, which I think we've pretty much all said at some point, 
one of the single best features of 2.0 is Flexbox um, because it's going to allow us just some amazing flexibility, <laughs> no pun intended, in our designs and making them exactly how we want. It is flexibility because it's you know it's the flex box model or flexible box model, and like I said, it takes what was the CSS HTML box model and gives you infinite possibilities of how you can easily line these boxes up instead of the same old way where it's one inside of the other. This is still same; it's still one inside the other, but totally functions differently. But uh, <coughs> so let's just continue along here. So you see here, I put in three items here got four over here so this made all the boxes even the empty one over here all the same height and uh, i wasn't sure if it was going to do this or not now like i said i should have practiced on this i built this thing you know the the model i had here in case somebody hadn't seen it i built this probably a month ago and haven't looked at flex since um but so what we had here is so i opened up the flex container inside of this that is the flex container that is this column and i came in here and i said you know normally it'll come in as a row now i'm making it a column but then i noticed here that justification came on i wasn't sure if it was going to or not or if we had to create another flex box inside of the column in order to get it to work but it appears to be working and so we can change it we can go to so this is a flex middle this is flex start this is flex end then we got space, I don't know, eventually here, if you hold your mouse here long enough, that's space around, space between, and then space evenly. And so you can have it do all these different things. And then, as I said, we can also, let me see here if we can do this, we can change the gap. Now, in this case here, it's only changing the gap on the outside. Um, and I think that's all we're going to get. So they really need, like I said, they, they got a couple things they're kind of missing here. And so they need to give us the ability to do column gap and row gap. And also they need the ability to do wrap. Mm -hmm. uh, these, again, these are all built in in functions. Uh, but if they're going to go this far, let's go all the way. Yeah. Let's just make this thing work. And then if we come up here to self-align, see that starts messing with it. Because up here, where you got this one here, that's stretch. That's the default. That's what gives us the full height. That's where it says, OK, all of you kids across the board go to full height. And that is the default, so you don't even need to have that turned on at all. So we can just clear that off right there. And then the other thing I was going to show here, let's see if we can get this to work, um, is we're going to add in here now another, we need to put in another flex container right and here. I was just saying, and what you're about to show is, so this is actually my, recollection, my rec recollection of history, Dan, and history is always in the eyes of the beholder usually. Um, the, so my recollection of history is that when way back when we even started first talking about Flex was because we had a whole bunch of people in the CF Design School community that was like, I have social media and my person has five social media icons and on mobile, the stupid things go up and down and I can't get them to stay side by side. Mm -hmm. This to me was like the catalyst for the whole flex thing. So you provided a solution and I know that your journey has been significant in terms of like even getting better at this, but this was like the pain point that so many CF Design School students had of I need my social media images to lay in flat and I can't do an image because each one needs to be clickable. So they have to be separate images and I want them side by side. And on mobile, that wouldn't work because click funnels out of the box, made them do this way. And it was crazy making. And so you had some initial solutions, but then eventually we got to this flex solution. And that to me is when we started talking about flex was this problem right here. Yeah. So if you guys want, I'll show you again exactly what I did here. So we're in this column and it doesn't have to be inside of a flex column. We can, let's just come down here. Let's just add another section to just to show it, it doesn't need to be as complicated as we're making it with all these different rows and stuff. So let's just come into a three column row. And let's say in here, we're just going to put in a paragraph just to have some text in here. And then we're going to come down here and we're going to say element. And we're going to say, uh, let's come down here. You got to find it. I could type it in. And we're just going to come down here and we're going to say an element where we're going to put in our icon. And then just for sake of brevity here, I'm just going to clone this twice. And there you go. I just set up in a matter of a couple of clicks, 
exactly what you're talking about. That will actually stay on mobile and not stack if we set it up. Well, right. let's let's see what it's going to do on mobile. Now that you <laughs> Oh, what did it what? do? It stay just how we wanted it to, side by each. Now, we'll again, scroll we, down and do the graphy ones. We could come in here and we could change this and we could say, okay, well, we want them to line up in a column. Which this put, is the default but, click funnels that nobody wanted. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in that case, you wouldn't want to do that because you went through all the trouble of doing the other. Mm -hmm. But again, same thing. Um, we can come in here and we can say we want to we want to put in a flex container again. So put in a flex container, and we're going to put in two image elements. We'll just clone this one here, and now immediately it's it lined them up because again we're inside of a flex box, and the default is to set it as a row. So it's going to set them up side by side. And then if we go to mobile, it will stay side by side like that. And you can change, you can mess around with the size and stuff. Um, because let me see here. We can do settings, image width of auto. I don't know. When I built this one over here, like I said, it's been a little while. I got them to look really good. Uh, whereas here, they seem to shrink them down. And I don't remember exactly right offhand what I did, but I know I didn't use any CSS. All yeah. of it was completely built right into the editor. And I think it's just an issue of, I got really narrow uh, yeah. uh, columns and stuff here. So just broaden out your columns, broaden out the row and it will look better. But then- Wait, Can I just do a little celebration too? I'm just realizing. So we've been going for about an hour, right? This whole time, not one bug, not one instability. Mm -hmm. Not one crash, right? Like all amazingness of us just showing it. I just gotta, Liz, we just gotta celebrate. Let's well, just celebrate. I, 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 celebrate I, I, too. I just accidentally deleted that entire column. Let's see. Let's see if the, if the way back button works. Oh, it worked. Oh, that's so cool. But that, you know, that's like, probably the coolest part for me. <laughs> the how many times have I deleted stuff and I go, oh no. Oh, I know. And it never works to come back. I know. Yep. But yeah. So anyway. Celebrating the wins, and even though even if there's no bugs, there's been no UX issues. Like we've pretty much all like there hasn't been a place where we're like I don't understand what's going on here. You know what I mean? So yay, it's good. Well, um, I think we saw we can we can do different things here. So these are just regular elements, and then in between these two regular elements, I dropped in another flex box in between, and then dropped in more elements into that flex box. And I have no doubt we can go one more level down and one more after that but you know it gets it gets kind of silly after a while we're gonna have a russian doll, doll challenge yeah. <laughs> but now the is, we're, to your point dad we should have a contest of the only tool you know like um on master chef how they like give you like five ingredients and then you have to like make something amazing so we're gonna do this with click funnels 2.0 where your only ingredient is flex box that's it. You can only use like you're not allowed to use more than one section, more than one row, only flex box. Go. Like it's gonna be so much fun. I, I guarantee you that when I'm building going forward, I probably will be doing exactly that. Yeah. There's no awesome. reason to have anything else. So we can come in here, let's put some what are we gonna call it? CF 2.0 flex flex off. <laughs> well, I will. I will tell you something right now. The hardest. <laughs> We're not talking about biceps, people. We're talking about boxes. <laughs> okay, this is something I found. There, there is a glitch in here yet, and this is. Oh, Dan, right uh, you right. could just let us run with it, could you? Stop talking because I don't want people going out there and and going. Oh, I can't get the borders or the shadows to work right. And oh yeah, they've been having some problems with them on some of the things. Well, yes, yeah, the, the reason why is like, because I inspected the code, and that's another reason why you should learn how to do this stuff, so you can inspect the code and see what the hell's going on. But um, the uh, what they did is actually you have the flex. But basically, there's like two, there's an outer wrapper and an inner wrapper, okay? Both of them have exactly the same uh, class. Each, each element in the CF 2.0 is given a class, but it's essentially an ID. And so because of that, both of these elements have exactly the same class. So when you turn it on, it turns on the shadow or the border for both of them at the same time. And so I put in a, a ticket on that. Hopefully they'll get this fixed soon. Because if you do that, or if you do, if you do a border, 
you get exactly the same thing. You can see it there. I'll make it bigger. Um, it does exactly the same thing. Mm -hmm. But honestly, this is the only bug I have found in Flex. It's awesome. Is this problem here. So right now, don't be trying to put borders or anything around it. But what I started to show here is, so we could come out here, we could put uh, on this, uh, the outer here, we can do a border around that. We could do a border around, what am I doing here? Um, we, of course, could do a border around the section that we initially built. And so you can layer layers upon layers upon layers, whereas, again, with 1.0, there was always a problem. It's like, okay, well, I, you always like needed one more extra layer because I needed to put one more extra shadow around something or one more extra border. And so I resorted at times to building entire sections and then using JavaScript code to take that entire section and inject it inside of another section or inside of another row just in order to get the layers of things that i needed here yeah. again with flexbox it's infinite the things you can yep. stack inside of each other with what you saw is, is basically a couple of clicks yeah it's awesome. and a little, little rudimentary understanding of how this stuff works so susan i don't know if we still got some time but did you have something you wanted us to look at and yes um, this Anybody yeah, can have this piece quick. of artwork for, you know, $10,000. You just NFT take it. it. NFT it. Is NFT <laughs> still a thing? <laughs> Do you know NFTs? <laughs> be like, you know, a bowl or something. Right now, just to, you know, we, need dogs. we need dogs playing cards on here. That's what we need. <laughs> okay. Um, Andrea, if you need to jump off, feel free to whenever. I'm just going to show what, how I've used Flex so far in 2.0. Yeah. Um, so we're going to switch screens. Okay. okay. I need to stop sharing. How is oh, this? You're good. I already kicked you off. <laughs> and thank you, Dan, too, just for that walkthrough. And again, I'm just going to encourage everybody who's listening either now or on the replay. We will continue to talk about flex and in working yeah. sessions. We'll get our, we'll get our flex on because it's super powerful once you start to really hone in on it. Yeah, for sure. Um, Okay, so I have the, the social icons down in the footer. I mean, jump okay. into the universal section, but we've got just a regular three column row. And then I have a flex container inside of my third row here with my okay. icons in there. The third column. Works. There we go. It's working. Yay. Mm -hmm. um, and then the first way that I started using it was actually to build something like this. I recreated this into here just so I can show it to you. Um, but I wanted to have an icon next to my text that, you know, I had control over rather than, you know, how like an element, sometimes you can add an icon before or after, but like, that's not what I wanted. I wanted like a button icon. And so I have flex here, uh, with just those two things in it. But then I kept my text down here out of the flex because if it's in it, then it's going to try to stick it, you know? horizontal with the rest of the things well you can so, again you can just uh if you leave it in there just again make that a column versus a row so change oh so, yeah you were gonna say like let me show you a different way of doing that so now i think i do have a better understanding of how i could do this differently but this was how i originally did it well but the text is longer i i don't know so i would move it but i don't up. know that i need it it could be in line with this is that what you're saying well, yeah, but it's gonna it's gonna probably wrap uh, the text on the bottom is gonna wrap around. Uh, I I prefer the look of it like this versus what I think you're gonna get if you move it up into the flex box. Okay, like so, if I were if to move it, here, see what happens. What do you move it up where? Because move I already did move the text up this. <laughs> into the flex box. At least I think you should oh, be able. To wait a minute. Hold on, where is it going? It's like, I can do that. Okay, now now open up the flex box. Okay. And now set it to column. So under direction, the second box over. Well, I but I don't want that, right? I still want my icon to be on the side. Um, so I want my icon to oh, be on Oh, okay, top. you're right. You, yeah. would need, you would need to put another flex box inside, inside where the text is. Yeah. Okay. So if I were, let me just take this out for a moment. So in my flex box, I would add a, like 
on the element level here. Yeah, add an element. Add another flex box container. <laughs> and then I would put this inside of it. Um, and then I would need to move it. Yeah, you want, you want to put both. Anymore. You want to put both text elements then inside of that inner flex container. Both of them in there. I think I got gotcha. you. Okay. Because then I can set that one to be. Okay. Now, yeah. Change. Direction up and down. Yeah. I got gotcha. you. Okay. Yeah. So I see what you mean. Like it probably looks better the other way, but this is the alternative way. If it if this way makes sense for whatever. Yeah. Why. The reason why it's wrapping now is because there's probably some sort of paddings on the sides of those flex yeah. containers, maybe even some margin, because they stand. I think the standard come with right and left padding of 15 pixels and right and left margin of 16 oh, pixels, for God's mm -hmm. sake. I don't know why they default to 16. If I were to get rid of as much of the padding, but then I would want to add, or no, 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 not add, but um, is it this? Here, I could do yep. that, but I don't necessarily want that either. I just need to add some padding. Um, so I don't have like a, how yeah, would I add padding to just this we'll icon just open, and get rid of it over just here? Just open up the icon and put some top margin or top padding. So that would be, okay. And then if I were wanting to get rid of, see, I still have more padding on that level. Okay. And then I would do top here. And then maybe a whoops, a little bit there. Uh, one thing that I wish I'm already running into, um, I wish that we could have this break down into left or right as okay, well. well set, it, set it to zero, and then go um, maybe go to the go to the flex container that the arrow is in that one there, and try. You already have it justified to start, don't you? Yeah, that's a flex start already. So it should already be as far left inside of its, basically inside of its column as it can possibly go. Right. Um, I do have, that's background. So yeah, so it was just something I've noticed. I've run into that a few times where I, was, I just um, have noticed it would might be helpful to have a separate left and right slider in some situations. But I mean, this that works fine in this situation it's fine yeah. um no i'm gonna be honest with you i i think i like the way it looked better beforehand beforehand so, yeah so it's one I, of these I, things where just because you can doesn't mean you should yeah yeah but it's an option so there's multiple ways to accomplish mm -hmm. the idea that you have in your head which before it was unless you knew how to do it with code and you even knew it was a possibility <laughs> you were like, well, I can't do it that way. We have to design the page differently. But now go to the lower, to go to the lower text element and click on it and open it up. And now on there, set some, set more right and left. I'm just, I just want to see here. Now just set more right and left padding. Oh, right. uh, more left and right padding. Yeah. So squish it together and now center, center justify it. I was just, I was just trying to see you can squish it down. No, not, not, in, not in the flex. Go down <laughs> just where you would normally do it. Just scroll down on the. Ah, uh, there we go. Gotcha. There you go. And so you could do something like that too, skin, skinny up because um, skinny up. in 1.0 they didn't have padding like that on particular elements. All you had mm -hmm. was top margin. Oh my gosh, padding. Whereas every yeah, it was yeah. Oh, Every element now has top, bottom, left, and right padding too. It's awesome. So it's awesome. You know, the the micro granularity that they're giving us here, but again, it also is it's just increases the level of complexity. Right. We don't we don't have a Pinto anymore. This is a Ferrari. It's just you know. As, yeah, as I'm pointing out something I've noticed, when you are adding a lot of padding, it doesn't take an account to how it's going to look on mobile at this time. So on all my stuff, I haven't really been able to take advantage of that. I remove all the padding that I can. Um, where was that at? So this here, like you got to, if you add padding, that's not what I wanted. Where did I just add that to the, to this? It was the element. Was it, I thought it was this one. Was it not? Yeah, it's that one. And the the okay. other thing is then when you go to 
when you're in mobile now. So open up the flex container now that you're in mobile. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I would so love to keep geeking out with you guys, but I got to peel off. Okay. Um, Hi, but big announcement. Funnel Hacking Dive 2.0 next, yes, next week. 2.0 <laughs> sightings. If you guys love 2.0 and you want to like even do a quick like, hey, let's power on the side and let's go live and let's talk about it. Like we are so in. So, and yes, we'll do dailies and all the good stuff. So anyways. Yes. You guys I think I'm going to make a but... post in this group and pin it to the top and we can just post everything related to that next week on that post. You'll have a place to do it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Cool. And again, I'm not meaning to cut you guys short because I love your geek out. Okay, we're going to wrap it up soon anyway. Okay. Cool. Bye. Bye. Bye, guys. All right. We will keep hanging out for a few more minutes, though, Dan and I. Let me jump back to here um, because I just, you were going to tell me, go to the flex container. So I'm in the flex container, uh, um, the outer and then, one. And then there, set that to column. Let's set it to that. what? Columns right there, flex direction, columns, one second one. Yeah. So that looks pretty decent. Yeah, if that's what you want it to look like. Um, because you could keep them side by side, as as we know, but uh, I don't I don't know if it looked that good. Right. No, no, I don't think it looked good on mobile at all. Um, yeah. but then you'd have to add that query thing, the the mobile. Oh no, wait. It kept it. No, remember, that's what we were talking about earlier, is that's the beauty of this, is inside the Flex container, depending on what you click at the top there, whether it's mobile or or desktop, you could set what it looks like independent. So you could My set mind did settings. not grasp that until you now. <laughs> you can set your desktop settings and you can set your mobile settings and they're different. That's huge. So you don't need to go find, you don't need to set the, okay, I get it. Every, I think everyone in the chat was in on the conversation. I was not because you guys were talking about breakpoints. And so we can set it for mobile and we can set it for desktop. We just can't set it that way in between. You'd have to go use uh, media qu queries for all the other sizes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You got, you got basically two sizes inside of ClickFunnels. That's awesome. It. Okay, I was worried. I was like, well, that's cool, but then you still have to like duplicate everything and have mobile only versions of it. But we don't. <laughs> no. no, again, that's that's another reason why I was saying is I may just be building totally inside in of it. it. And then the other thing too is if you're still not able to quite get it looking exactly right, remember yeah. you can still use elements that only show on mobile and elements that only show on desktop. Mm -hmm. So, okay, well, this isn't, I don't like the way this, I like the way the text is showing inside of the inner uh, flex container on desktop, but on mobile, eh, it just isn't working right. So I'm going to make a mobile only version, pull that out of the flex container, and then just have it sitting there independent of itself. It wouldn't even have to be in any of the flex containers at that point. It could just be like hanging out down below. So in this yeah. case here, you could make a mobile version and that would and put it down so it would be like under where the button is. So you could have the red text, the red button, and then uh, another line of text below it just by making one desktop and one mobile. So if I were to add another element right here, is that what you're saying? Um, I would go back yeah. to desktop. I just... I okay. Just I wasn't, I guess I wasn't quite mobile. following what you were saying. But, okay. um, yeah. okay. So what so you want to do, what you wanna do is outside of the... Yeah, kind of get a little high there. So not everything that you change on mobile is only on mobile. Well go go back to the go back to the mobile. Go click on the mobile up at the top again. Well I'm sorry you got to go into the flex container. Okay. Because again this is always container. inside a flex container. See where is the top oh, right here. Yeah, okay. I thought you meant interviews. In versus those two images. Okay. Gotcha. I don't know if those two images control, I don't think they control the padding. I think that is just 100% for the flex container, whether it's mobile or desktop, it's just totally for the, the uh, flex container. It's just, yeah. Uh. So if you go back into desktop, I'll show you what I was, what I was okay. talking about. Okay. So, um, so let's say we don't like that, uh, the second line of text, we don't like the way that looks inside of the mobile. So what we want to do is we want to clone that line of text. And now you want to pull it outside of the flex container. So it's actually double nested into two.
flux containers. You may have to drop it into like another, like up by the other paragraph or something. Yeah, I, I. It, 2.0 is having a little bit of issues of indicating where you're actually dragging stuff at the moment. Yeah, it's not it's not showing up the orange line today, I've noticed. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so now you want to take that and try to get it outside of the outside. Outer, outer flex container. Outside of this one. Yes. So below this one. Okay, well, actually, that's not going to work because we've got the background color. No, you, it will work because you already have a white color on it. So see if you can add if you can drop that right down below that flex container. So just right there, drop it. Oh, it went inside. Okay. I have an idea. One second. Um, and I just add that and then I can drag this there and then I can delete this. There we yeah. go. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So this is outside that flex container. Right. So now set the one inside to desktop only and the one outside to mobile only. And then you can independently work with that second one for for mobile. Okay. And then stick this one back in. Well, no. I was. What no. my thought was is that you could, if you wanted to, then change the order of these things. So you'd have the red text, the button, and then the black text on on your mobile device. I'm just, I'm just, you know, throwing. We're out just it. playing around. Yeah, I totally get it. One way might not. Yeah, it may not be the right option for this situation, but it's good to know, like, think outside the box. <laughs> think no, inside no, the box just, and outside the box. <laughs> yeah. One thing you could do that would be even cooler then is yeah. increase the width of the text on the left-hand side, drop that below the image, and then pull it up so that the text is there, but it's wider, mm -hmm. which you probably completely missed that, and it looks like you've got a little one you need to go take care of. Yeah, he's good. Um, okay. So that's really, that's really good to know. I got it. Thank you. Um, he's anxious for his brother and sister to get home. I bet. Um, okay. So yeah, there basically my takeaway is that there's a lot you can do with it. I think we probably still just scratched the surface today on what the possibilities are. Oh yeah. And bottom line is you just got to go in and start experimenting and playing with it. And maybe if that's intimidating and you don't have time for that either, um, like who was it in the comments said, um, you know, when you have a design that you want to do and it's challenging and you're like, I don't know how to accomplish this. Chances are flex is going to help you be able to accomplish it. Yeah. Yeah. If, if just using the regular box model is not going to work, then you use the flex box model. Yeah. And that is technically what is called in CSS. Cool. Yeah. And so you got your flex containers again, just to, you got flex container and then you got whatever you put inside of it, which can be another flex container. Yeah. And another flex container inside of that. And eventually you got to put in some elements, otherwise you're not going to have any text or images or anything. But um, you can, it's, it really is, it gives you infinite possibilities of what you can build. When I had built this one, before there were some guys, I dropped this onto Facebook one Saturday afternoon, I think. And I said, Hey, I just built this whole thing inside of ClickFunnels, didn't use any CSS, no JavaScript, nothing. And a couple of people with big mouths start pop, pop, whatever spouting off about, Oh, <clears throat> I do that all day long inside of Kajabi. <laughs> like, no, you don't. <laughs> yeah. You don't do that inside of Kajabi. And I don't know of anywhere else that has flex containers. And if somebody does know of another builder who is actually using the Flexbox model and has it available to all their builders without having to do it in CSS. But even at that, to do it in CSS, you saw earlier is, um, wait, you couldn't see my screen. Okay, I don't, I don't. Oh, I'm the, sorry. I don't, no, mm -hmm. never, never mind, never mind. Okay, it, it was okay. Not, it wasn't I was following you. I didn't realize you were even showing. Yeah, no, I thought I was still sharing my screen. So I pulled up <laughs> that image I had from earlier, but to, you know, if, if you're watching the video, just you've seen it already. Um, yeah. But uh, uh, what was I going to say is, well, I was saying if, if if there is another builder that has Flex built into it. Oh, I know. But the, the, the last part of that was, you know, and Andrea's like, well, without having to do a whole bunch of complicated CSS. Well, I showed earlier, for the most part, it's like one line. Even if mm -hmm. you're doing this just with CSS, and for the most part, it is one line. And that's yeah. all there is. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's 
once you understand it. Yeah, once yeah, you for the know most about part, it. <laughs> for the most part, you turn on you turn on flex. So you say property is display, yep. the value is flex. You turn that on. And then if it, if it's in a row and you want it to be in a column, you just say flex direction column. Mm -hmm. And for the most part, 90% of the time, that just did everything you needed to do for flex. But yeah. by having them yeah. build it in now and be able to go in there and just start click, 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 click. And the fact that you can set mobile independent of desktop. Mm -hmm. When I Again, when I saw that, I mean, first off, flex is a game changer. But when I saw you can set them independent without any CSS, I was just like, oh. Uh, yeah, that's like news to me of the last five minutes. That's yeah. exciting. Um, I was showing like what I was clicking around on my screen because um, I wanted to just point something else out. Um, certain pages that you are creating in ClickFunnels 2.0, and I don't know this, I think I may have started from scratch on this page. So I don't know what is determining what. I have, you know, in 1.0, you can choose the type of page you're about to build and it gives you certain features and it doesn't give you certain features. That's kind of happening in 2.0 a little bit because I created this blog post template and I was trying to get my social icons on here. And I was like, I can just add a flex container here, but there is no flex container showing up for me in this menu i even tried searching flex and it doesn't pull it up at all um because you can see like there's actually hold on let me go to yeah no i've looked at everything yeah just type flex in the search of the top. yeah i've done that and so it's not oh, there it is okay what just liar <laughs> was it because it started me it, out it on be. a different spot yeah. I think because you were okay. So keep time. that in mind then, because it they, because the system knows that this is a blog page right now because I've asked, probably because I've assigned it as that. It's skipping my general section here, but yesterday and I have a witness and you guys can go watch my stream into the group yesterday. I was trying to do this and I was typing in flex and it was not finding it. So yeah, see there. So you got. I guess you have to click show all elements. And then hmm. you can do it. So what I what I did was I used a navigation because I knew that we could put images in. We discovered that the other day, Dan. Oh yeah, yeah, that's and right. And so I just put in images, and I have it in a navigation element. To like, oh, I'm figure this out. You know, again, <laughs> that's that's not a bad use, and um, yeah, I mean that's even simpler if you really think about it. You don't even have to bother putting it in a flex box. You grab a navigation element, you put in your three icons. Right there, it's already got built-in ability just to drop the link right on it. So that's even actually simpler. I mean, yeah, but then I had to go and get images. I had to drop images rather than here. Oh, okay. I can, can just grab, you know, I can just grab my icons, put in my okay. two icons like I do down here, find my Facebook one, find my YouTube one. I don't have to go and find my images okay. and then upload yeah. my images. So yeah, I, I would like, still so. say this is the easier way, but it was not working for me. So that was my workaround. So there's more than one way to accomplish what you're trying to do. Hmm. And, now, um, and now that you say all that, now I'm thinking now my brain, of course, is going too well. Um, the fonts actually, the icons, I should say, are actually font awesome fonts. Mm -hmm. So they're treated like fonts. So I'm wondering now, could we even in the navigation element go into the text and actually put in the font code and have that work? But I haven't tested it. So if somebody wants mm -hmm. to do that in your free time, just go right ahead. <laughs> Test out the things. Let us know what you're discovering. But again, but, yeah. those icons like that, you can just go to Google, Google it and just grab one. Um, Not condoning yeah. doing that, but if you want to. <laughs> well, I walked through the whole process yesterday when I was going through it. I was like, and then I'm going to open up Canva and I'm going to buy my icons. And then I'm going to go to Infinity and crop them so that and change the uh, colors. And <laughs> I was doing all the things. So You couldn't change um, the colors in Canva? Oh, okay. no, I changed the colors in Canva and then I cropped them. And because I have this, uh, I don't know what it's called in Canva, like a document that I just always have. And it's always set to 1920 by, what is it, 1080 or whatever the dimensions are. Yeah. And it's my just, if I need an image, I go and I dump it in there and then I save it and then I go and crop it somewhere else. So I don't have to guess what size I need to have in Canva. I don't know. Yeah, I 1920, 1920 would be a little bit bigger for that. 
but that's usually I'm using it to create backgrounds. So I use the, yeah. I use that size. Right. And then, yeah, that's the right dimension. And then I open it in infinity and then I save it to the size that I need it to be. <laughs> There's a whole process. <laughs> well, I found something the other day. Um, I just Googled resize image and there's like a site is called resizeimage.com and yeah. you just drop whatever you want in there and in this case here i need an image that was 512 pixels so i just 512 click download done yeah yeah um one other thing that i've noticed in 2.0 um that there is still a file size max limit it's three <coughs> three gigabytes three megabytes Three for, megabytes? for images or what? For any file. Megabytes, hmm. right? Gigabytes would be huge. It's got to yeah, be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> megabytes. Because yeah. um, I was trying to upload a PDF. And you know how sometimes people have really graphical PDFs and they're like giant. They're like print quality. Um, so I had to go and compress it before I could upload it. So just also be aware uh, that that's there too. Where were you... Share your screen again. Where were you uploading a PDF? In the in the files. Okay, is there there's a file section? So um, and I will like, be honest, it didn't actually end up working, so I ended up uploading it to 1.0 anyway, and just hosting it in 1.0. Yeah. Um, well, I, I was able to upload it, but I don't know when I was grabbing the link, it was asking me to log, in, like clicking on it, it was asking me to log in, so it wasn't really a shareable link that it that I was able to grab. It was more oh. of an internal link. So I'm not sure if I just missed where I need to grab the correct link or what, but yeah, you're probably gonna right. have to you probably can't even just grab a link. What you have to do is you're gonna have to download it onto your hard drive before you can upload it into the files. It has to be a no, physical that's what file I did. On your computer. So even after you downloaded it onto your computer, it was still protected. You had to log in. Logging it after I uploaded it to 2.0 and then I put the link that I thought was the right link into an email and then I was testing the email and I clicked on the link and it took me to where I, it should have just opened the PDF so I could save it, oh. but it took me to a, it was either an error page or a login page, but it didn't work. So yeah. Was it trying to have you log back into ClickFunnels? Do you think? Yes. If so, okay. That's yeah. That's just a glitch then. Okay. Again, yeah. So again, just, again, everyone is still watching here. It's in beta. It's beta. In beta. You can't always do everything yet. <laughs> it's, it's 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 a poor little baby that still is in its diapers, <laughs> and it needs a lot of a lot of love and care at this point. Yes. Okay. All right. We're gonna sign off. Thanks for hanging out with us. This is the longest stream I think we've done yet. Thank you, Dan, so much for sharing your flex knowledge. For flexing your flex mom. knowledge, yes. <laughs> and um, yeah, I think we'll we'll keep you guys updated next week. We'll keep you specially updated, Dan, <laughs> of what's going on. You no, know, like I, like I said, for the people who weren't at the beginning, I said next week I'm going to have Susan and Andrea be my roving reporters at at Funnel Hacking Live, and then they can get a hold of me, and I'll I'll turn on the live, and we'll all just go live. Yep. And, uh, we'll jump uh, in and I think well, that, I think honestly that'd be the easiest way is you guys get yeah. a hold of me I have you jump on zoom and I yeah blast yeah. into the group or wherever sure yeah I think so um if you don't want to miss any announcements if you guys are not going to be at funnel hacking live yourself but you want to keep up to date we will probably be going live several times either officially all together or in, as individuals so make sure you have like our group notifications turned on if you don't want to miss any of that and then turn them off after next week if you want to but <laughs> i don't really care <laughs> um okay all right thank you dan everybody right. have a great weekend and we will see you next week take care Bye-bye.